Hi everyone. Welcome to Things Smart Home. Today we are going to talk about Alexi templates on Proxbox. So what is an Alexi? Alexi is well known Linux container runtime. This consists of tools and templates. It's pretty low level, very flexible and very lightweight virtual machine in a containerized environment. It uses its host kernel, so it's really lightweight because it shares the file structure of its host. But then the question is, is it safe and secure to use Alexis? I would say yes in most cases, where we are running the Alexi in unprivileged mode. So in this case, even if your Alexi is compromised, it doesn't carry the root privileges on your host. Also, if you are using an Alexi on your local area network only and not exposing it to outside world, then the threat service is greatly reduced. I don't recommend using Alexis if you are opening them up to outside world and definitely not if you are running them in privileged mode. If I really need to expose an Alexi to internet, I would replace it with a VM rather. I do use Alexis in my home lab environment because they come with almost all the features of full-fledged VM with minimum resource usage. I generally don't expose them to internet and these are mostly in unprivileged mode. Alright, back to the tutorial. Today we will be creating a new Linux container in Proxmox using its very friendly WebGUI and tweak few of its settings to make it a little bit more secure and kind of plug and play for all our future deployments. Please be advised, we will be running few commands to set it up. If you are not comfortable with command line interface, don't worry. I'll show you step by step how to do it and we'll share all the commands in the description. I know you don't see a lot of command line tutorial in my channel, but trust me, it will be a great learning curve and super fun. You will start enjoying it as you get more control over home projects choosing it. Alright, let's start with the tutorial. So the first step is to download an LXE template from the internet before we can use it. In today's tutorial, we will be using Ubuntu template. To download a template, go to your local storage and then click on CT templates and then click on template. Now search for the template you are looking for. I'll look for Ubuntu and maybe select the latest one and then click on download. Alright, so download is complete. As I mentioned earlier, this is not a full flash Ubuntu ISO download. The Alexi is basically using the whole host file structure so download should be few megabytes as you can see is roughly 135 megabytes all right so we'll close the task view window and now we can go ahead and create a new template all right so click on create ct and give it a container id i'll give it 889 and for the template i'll give it lxc template so I'll give it a name called LXE template and the, for the password we have to give it a strong password because this will be a template for all the future deployments and click next so as you can see this is unprivileged container so leave it checked and that's this nesting is also a um, very useful feature um, we'll, we'll talk about this one later probably in some of the videos click next uh, alright so for the template uh, for the storage click on local storage so this is where I want to um, store the template and then this for the template uh, select the template we, we just downloaded you should see that option now in the drop down and then click next for the disk uh, this is a very lightweight I'll leave it even probably 5 gig should be enough for this tutorial or even for the template we can increase it anytime if we really want to so I'll leave this one for now at 5 and I'll select my local ZFS storage to um, uh, to save this container uh, to save this template click next 
for the CPU one core is enough uh, for memory the default 512 megabytes should be more than enough so I'll click next for the network I'll select DHCP I want to control the IP address assignment through my um, UDM Pro so I'll click next for the DNS I'll leave everything as default because this will be picked up automatically from my host click next again check the checkbox to start it after creation and then click finish it might take a while so if I close this one you can see there was a lock now it's gone so that means the creation has been completed so it will take some time to boot up alright so it has booted up so I'll click on console and now we can see that we can log into our container so to log into our container we need to use root and the password which we entered earlier all right so we are in so now before we make it as a template i would like to tweak few settings to make it a bit more secure and then kind of a plug and play for our future deployments so the first thing which i want to use is i want to kind of a lock the default root user and add a new user and then give it a privileges of the root user so uh, I don't like to use the root user everywhere so I'll say add user Alexi maybe and then give it a password alright oh, sorry so password does not match I have to try again alright so for the name I like, will skip everything for now you can enter if you want alright so a new user is created so now we need to add this user into pseudo group that means we have to give it a give this user access or privileges of the root user so I'll say add user lxc into pseudo group so it is confirming that user has been added to our pseudo group so which is fine now the last thing I want to do is I want to lock the root user so I can do that by using lock command um, you, followed by the username now you can unlock the root user later if you want by using u and dash u sorry and then you can also set the password again for this one if you really want to enable it again for some reason all right so new uh, user is created so let's log in with the new root user lxc and i'll give it a password and I'll go as a root all right so now the first thing we need to make sure that our template or our container is up to date so I'll run at update command it might take some time to get all the updates and then we will run the update um, upgrade command just to make sure is there up to date alright so now we need to run upgrade command so yes okay while the update is happening please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel also hit the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video about smart home automation storage and network security all right so our update is complete now let's continue tweaking our LXC container so the first setting which I want to update is enable SSH and then change the default port so we can do that by going to all right so we are uh, we need to look for a line with a port number and uncommented so I'll make sure I'm not using default port which is 2.2 so I'll add something into it so I'll probably just add 
uh, 70022. So this is kind of my default port. To save it, I'll control X and then yes and then save. Or it's your default SSH port has been um, updated. So just to make sure it takes effect, we need to reboot the SSH service. So we can do that by using running the C system CTL command. Alright, so now this is done. So we need to install a few packages. So these are kind of helpful in case you get stuck somewhere and these can help you troubleshooting what the issue is. Um, so uh, you can add or remove the packages if you want, but I'll go for these ones for now. Alright, so now this is done. The last step is to enable the firewall. So we need to enter the file word config settings. So first one is to um, default deny everything. So basically by default or firewall we deny everything. So now uh, we need to add some firewall rules to give a clear access to our local network. So first one is to add the default outgoing all right so I have enabled the outgoing on, on my Galaxy container which is fine so now now we need to uh, allow access to and from our local network so that will be so in my case is 10.0 so that I um, that subnet might be different in your case so uh, you, you need to update uh, as per your your network setting so and then the last step is to enable the firewall let's check the status all right so firewall is all up and running and up to date all right so these are most of the settings which i would like to do and now i can convert this this lxc container into a template and then it will be good to go for me or for us uh, for any future deployment if we have to. Alright, so before we can convert this LXC container into a template, we need to power it off and then we can convert into a template. So I'll simply click on shutdown. Alright, so this has been powered off. Uh, you should see the status. Okay. So the status is updated now. This LXC template, which we just created, it was a container. So um, don't confuse yourself with the with the name. I give it a name as a template, uh, but now we it's not a template at the moment. It's a it's a container, right? So now to convert into a template, right click and then click on convert to template. Yes, and then it might take some time be a few minutes and then it will be changed into a template uh, the, you can see uh, the template logo or template um, uh, shape is a bit different now I already had a template previously now I just this container which we created earlier in the video has now been converted to a template so now if we want to create a new um, LXC container based off this template just go, go to this one right click on this one and then click on clone and now you can see the same process not as a whole but just a similar process so we have to give it a container ID so I'll give it 110 and then the host name for the host name I'll give it a name as pyhole and then we need I'll select the other full clone and then click clone so as you can see a container pie hole has been created so I'll click on start all right so container has booted up so we need to log in with the username which we created while setting up the container so that was LXC and then the password I'll again go in as root. 
Also now we'll quickly go to PyHole website and then we'll run the automated script to install PyHole on our new newly created template, our newly created um, container basically. So I'll click, hold and paste. It's an automated script so it will be asking a few questions down the road to help us set up the PyHole. Now, why we are setting the pie hole in this video is I'm just preparing yourself for the next video. In next video, we will be using pie hole with Nginx proxy manager to um, to secure all our local services, basically which are not exposed to the internet. All right. So let's continue with the pie hole installation. Uh, for the first one, it's just giving us some information that is a network wide air blocker. So I'll click OK. Also, uh, it's asking that for the donation. If you want to donate, feel free to donate. And I'll, uh, it's confirming that you would need a static IP, so that's fine. I'll, I'll make this container as a static IP later. Yeah, I'll, as I said, I will mark it as a static IP later. So I'll click continue. Um, so just for for now, just select the upstream server, which is Google. That's fine. A uh, third party block list. Okay, I want to use it because I we can use third party block list just to have some ad blocked in our network as well. So, I uh, yes, I want to install web interface and yes, query logging. I, I would like to use uh, if you want to enable it, uh, make sure that your container or your server is secure and then nobody else has the access to this one. So uh, for this one, I'll I'll enable show everything, and now PyHole will be installed on this container. Alright, so installation is complete. It's just telling us the IP address and the password to access our web login page, so we can go ahead and access our PyHole. Now it will always come up as a placeholder page. So to access the admin page, we need to have slash admin, and now we can access the PyHole login. Alright, that's it for this video. I'll stop right here, and then we'll come back next time again, and then we will set up PyHole with Nginx Proxy Manager, and then access our local services securely by by using our own domain and the Cloudflare Arduino challenge. Alright, so that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I'll see you in the next video.